good morning so it is a early morning and i am hopping out in the garden because last night i was up all night thinking about the shelves in my greenhouse and realizing that i might have a disaster on my hands and i didn't get out here and secure them so i'm going to show you how that works um, and what I'm doing. This has worked super well for me the last couple years. It's a surefire way to just keep your little um, shelves secure if you have one of these little unheated greenhouses. This guy right here. Um, they have, mine has anyways, four shelves and they have these little wire grates which work pretty well to hold the plants up. Honestly, I haven't had any issue, but I'll show you what was keeping me up last night. I put this pot of arugula up here and I noticed that this shelf had already been bent a little bit um, and I didn't even think anything of it. And then last night in the middle of the night, I thought, oh my gosh, that's gonna break. <laughs> um, and these are all gonna go flying. So I wanted to get out here this morning and move these pots and get this shelf secure because as you can see, it's starting to bow a little bit and that could potentially be bad. I have all those seedlings started. We can't have bad things happening to those. Okay, so let me move these down. All right, so that's better. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it's just a little wire tray that fits over, but this is the answer to your problems. Um, just a few little zip ties. I use these in so many places in the garden. There's something I always keep in my garden bag. And I find that you just, yeah, you just never know when you're gonna need to secure something. And they're pretty strong and sturdy. I haven't had any issue with these like breaking. I don't put, you know, just super, super, super heavy um, pots on here. That um, pot with the arugula is about as big as I go. I try not to like, you know, just really weigh it down because the whole structure is not like, it's just not super secure, right? It's pretty good. It has functioned for me for three years. This is my third winter with this thing. And it, I've had no issues, no issues with it breaking or the plastic, you know, anything, but um, I just don't want to weigh it down too much. I've had people ask like, could you hang hanging baskets, you know, up here from the top? Um, and I honestly, I, I wouldn't, I don't know. Maybe you could do one, but um, I just would worry. Uh, but anyways, this is super easy to secure. I try to do it one-handed with the baby in the front back. We'll see if I can show you what I'm doing. All right, so I am going to do four zip ties, one in each corner. That's what I've done in the past to secure it. I took these off, took these shelves off. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Oh my gosh. Um, there we go. Look at that. So I took these and that's it. I took these shells off in the summer because I had um, some squash planted on here in here in these grow bags and um, they started growing really big and I didn't want them to try to be like you know growing through the shelves uh, because it just was you know, gonna block the leaves and everything so I just cut off the zip ties in the summer and then I'll trim these ends I'll come back and then, um, yeah, I'm just putting them back on here now that the season is going again. And this will just really hold this shelf on and shouldn't have any worries. I recommend doing this before you even start putting plants on. Like if you get one of these, just I would just first thing, zip tie it on just to make sure that you don't have the shelf buckle and fall through. And there we go. So as I said, I will come back in and, you know, clip off these ends but it's basically secure enough now that I can put my seedlings back on here and there shouldn't be any risk of them falling through or the shelf buckling or anything like that. There we go. Got the grow bags down here, something starting to come up. Lots of fun stuff happening in this greenhouse and I'm super excited to continue to use it throughout the year. If you'd followed along when I got it set up, um, I brought brought the citrus in here and look how happy that's looking. Both the citrus and the eucalyptus are looking super happy. It's been still pretty toasty in this greenhouse during the day. We are still having nice fall temperatures, so it's in the 60s, 70s during the day. Um, and the greenhouse has been heating up. Like it gets over 100 in here probably, 
Um, so I've been a little bit nervous about some of these cool weather, um, like seedlings that I've been starting, but so far everything looks good. And now it's nice and secure. I have to decide about putting the shelves on the lower space. I'm just gonna not do it yet um, because I, ha I do have the seedlings growing in these. And yeah, I don't need the space on the lower shelf, so I'm not gonna put the lower shelves in just yet. I'll come back out and zip tie them on if I decide to do that. But yeah, that's what's going on in here. Here's all my little perennials. Looking pretty good. I feel so much happier now knowing that that shelf is secure. I don't often get woken up in the middle of the night um, by garden worries. Someone else wakes me up. Um, but yeah, I don't usually, um, you know, like worry about stuff like that. But boy, last night I was thinking that shelf is just about to collapse. I better get something on. So I feel so much happier to have that done. I am going to just go ahead and water in here. Um, we got rain last night, but obviously the rain didn't get into um, the greenhouse. And that's one thing I always have find myself having to remember with the greenhouse too, is that like, even if it rains outdoors, you gotta come out and water the greenhouse. Um, and yeah, the garden is just sort of chugging along here. We still haven't gotten a frost as you saw the flowers at the beginning of the video. How pretty is that pink gara? Let's just take a moment to look at it again while we're out here. So this was just a little wisp of a plant and I had it, it was kind of crowded out. So it was like, I thought it was gonna die, honestly. And then I brought it out here and it has just taken off. What I love about Gara is that it kind of fills in and around other plants. Like you can see it just sort of becomes like these little, they're almost like little fairies or something. Just such a whimsical little flower. It's so pretty. A really, really good perennial. I might have to get more of this. I don't know, I just really like it. And it kind of, yeah, just fills in really nicely. The salvia is still doing so well. Oh my gosh, look at that blue. The bees are on it. So I'm leaving that and I'm trying to decide, I think I'm gonna leave these stalks of the cone flowers for a little bit longer. And then probably when I clean out the annuals in here, maybe I've been them. leaving them for the birds, but I think the birds are pretty much eating them all and I've also got the bird feeders up now too so I have plenty of forage for them in this garden so so that's nice I'm not so worried about that uh, but my gosh it's so nice I don't often get out here this early um, usually it takes me a while to get going oh little honeybee um, but it was nice to, <laughs> to kind of nice to have a reason to rush out here and fix things in the greenhouse all right, I am going to water. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any other unheated greenhouse questions in the comments. Um, I am not an expert, but I've done this for a few seasons now and I'm starting to get a handle on what I like to do. So thank you again and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.